Good morning, you beautiful souls, and welcome to the first Sunday in June to the virtual Sunday service, Journey Within Spiritualist Church. I am Reverend Dennis Battersby from the Journey Within, and I'll be hosting today's service. I am pleased to welcome our guest today, our very own pastor of the Journey Within Spiritualist Church, Reverend Joe Shiel. Welcome, Reverend. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you. We begin our service with spiritual healing conducted virtually as our healers are with us today. If you would like to request healing for someone, please type their first name and the first initial of their last name into the chat box. Please do not include the person's full last name. If you wish, you may also add the names of your pets, the planet, or global circumstances. We will open with prayer, followed by a brief period of quiet meditation. If you would like to participate in the healing, please quiet yourself, focus on your breathing, and as you inhale, feel yourself boosting your own immune system and igniting the healer within. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we join together in prayer asking for healing for all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering and in need of healing. We ask that their suffering be eased in some way. We also pray for healing of the minds and the hearts of all people. May we learn to be kinder, gentler, and more compassionate. We may learn to see your beauty within ourselves, within all living things, and within all your creation. May we learn to honor you through our thoughts and actions, and may we learn to be ambassadors for healing while we walk this earth. Amen. As we come to the end of healing, we will continue to remember and pray for those who are suffering and who are in need of healing. Amen. If you would like to request healing for anyone during the course of the week, please email or call the church with their names and we will forward this to the healers who will pray for the healing for the days, weeks, and months to come. Thank you, all of our healers. Welcome again, everyone. I'm Reverend Dennis Battersby from the Journey Within Church, hosting today's service. We are here today with Reverend Joseph Scheel. We open the service with song and prayer. I would like to invite Reverend Joe to lead us in the opening prayer, Reverend Joe. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everybody. Buddy. What it is for us to be here. Oh, great God and spirit, we ask you to be down upon us, innocent through us in every way, to touch our hearts and pierce our hearts with the love that you give. We thank you for being with us today, all those seen and unseen around us, and I ask that today we'd be mindful of this day, this moment, this time, in the midst of all the things going on in the world, may we honor our own life, our own place and being, so that we can be lights to others throughout the world. In the midst of the strife and the pain of war, famine, hardships, weather, destruction, all the things that go around, on around us, from the big world issues to the inner circles of our own families. We ask that the storms be quieted just for a moment, that we feel a breath of fresh air, fresh freedom, and fresh life. Even with the losses around us, we are called to live and live well. And for this, we thank you. Amen. And now I invite Reverend Joe to provide us with today's address, Reverend Joe. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. You know, I had a, I had a marvelous uh, day yesterday uh, with my grandson, and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what he taught me. Because it's amazing when a three-year-old can teach you something, but he taught me a lot. And two different incidents happened that kind of sparked what I wanted to talk about today. 
many years ago, um, when I first uh, got out of college and I was very, very busy and trying to build a business, I um, got so busy that I would come home and my kids would be taller. Uh, they would be different and I miss them. You know, I missed their growing up because I was in such a hurry, such a, a fervor to be successful and to be all that, you know, and trying to prove to everybody else, it seemed, or even to myself, that I was worthy, that I was worth something. And so I clamored and, and struggled to be worthy and something. And what happened was I missed life around me. The people I loved the most, the people I should have spent more time with, the people that things, they were the ones that lost out. I may have had lots of things, lots of stuff, and lots of ability to buy more. But the problem was, is the people that needed me the most, or needed me close by, were kind of walked by, because I was too busy trying to hold it all together and hold it tight. Yesterday, I was uh, playing with the kids in the morning, and uh, I'm not exactly the best diaper changer, but I, I was doing good with the little one. He's five months old. That's Dylan. And Connor's three. And Connor's a pistol and a half and never, you know, energy bunny completely. But uh, Grandpa was kind of tired. So Grandpa sat down on the couch, and the minute, the minute uh, Grandpa hit the couch, uh, the eyes started to get heavy, and I started to kind of fall asleep on the edge of the couch. And the next thing I knew, I was being slapped on the arm by little Connor. And like, Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa. I, I said, what? What? You know, like, oh, my God, I need a nap, you know. What? He goes, you know, Grandpa, I'm only three once. And I went, oh, my God. Thank you. And I got up and he goes, come play with me. So I came up, got up and played more dinosaurs and trucks and whatever else there was and uh, had a blast. But I also was moved to tears because this was the times, these are the times that matter. This is what I missed when my kids were younger. And this is what I could miss now if I were to nap out or just cop out of being there in the moment, in that time, in the miracle of the little child in front of me that wants to play with me, that wants my attention, that it's okay with being around me, that isn't judgmental of the old guy, you know, just just wants someone to kick it out with and just be have fun with. To me, I learned a lot about keeping it in the day, about the doorway, the reformation, never being closed to the here or the hereafter, that I could make a difference today. My life may have been different a long time ago and may not have been the best, because owning stuff doesn't make you a good person. Understanding and respecting what you have and knowing what's more important, that's what makes you a good person. So finally, I'm learning, you know, some quicker than others. I guess I'm one of the slow ones, but I'm learning that there's so much important in living life. As I teach mediumship day and out, day in and day out, I tell people this isn't about death. And it's not about the fear of death. It's about living and living well. So many people I see grieving and in pain because of the loss of loved ones. And I often say to them, is that what they would want for you, to sit in the pain, to be the victim, to be the constant, you know, hurting one? Is that really what they want? Or do they want you to grab every minute of this life and live it to the fullest, live it well, enjoy the things that are provided for you here, the gifts of, of people around you, loved ones around you, Con congregants around you in the church, friends at work, friends here, just the interesting things that go on, good, bad, and indifferent, always learning, always seeing life take place. Recently, the world has been strained with storms, not only physical storms and, and tornadoes and hurricanes, but the storms of people's minds, the storms of people's hunger for power, hunger for land, hunger for, for stuff. 
for being the ones who know best, best, for being right. You know, there's an old saying, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? It's the matter of this movement towards really self-awareness and self-happiness that the spiritualist is called for. It's in our principles of how we should live our life, that this isn't the end, that there is more, that there's a continuity of life, that life will continue, and that our reformation for this, the things we've done right and wrong after this life, is there for us. And it's all within our mindfulness, all within our consciousness. We determine it. Sometimes we can be battered in life. We can be hurt in life. We can take from our childhood on up. We can take the hits. We can crumble under them. We can crawl under the bed and hide. We can crawl under our own weight and hide. We can crawl under alcohol, drugs, and other things and hide from our own being with self-hate, self-loathing, and even just blame on others over and over again. I had the opportunity recently to talk to a young man who I've been helping a little bit along the way. He spent most of his life, ever since he was young, ever since he was about eight, in institutions because of bad behavior, because of getting caught, because of stealing and this and that, always clamoring for someone to just love him, care for him, and know that he'd be okay. And yet, over and over again, he got in trouble. When I first got out of college, I worked as a counselor in Boys Town in Kearney, New Jersey. And I had 50 boys on my, on my uh, dormitory, ages 12 to 17. They had to have six convictions, not crimes, six convictions in order to be in that school more like a lightweight prison for boys, basically. But what I watched in all of them was the fact that their parents had not been there or their parents were abusive or their parents, had, but they also were learning to be self-sufficient. That's what they were being taught by counselors, that this may be your life, so you need to take control of it, be personally responsible for where you go. A number of them never made it. They're institutionalized today. But many of them did. And this boy I talked to the other day, this young man in his 20s that I talked to the other day, has come up and out of all that behavior, all that stuff, sober, straight, ready to go, ready to, to live life, building his own business, building relationships, understanding what things are. And I said, how did you do this? He said, one is, I needed to find a God I understood. And I said, well, what else? And he said, I needed to stop looking for the love that I thought I needed. Stop chasing someone to love me, chasing everybody to love me. Please love me, please love me, please love me. I needed to stop chasing love and just allow those who wanted to love me to love me and to pay attention to how special that really was, because that was the gift. The gift wasn't out there somewhere to chase down or to hold on to or to grab or to try to hold, you know, try to kidnap and take with me because it's what I wanted. It was no more what I wanted. It was what was naturally there for me. And all of a sudden love came and it's there. And today I have it every day, but I do it one day at a time. And I said, pretty special, pretty awesome. He said, one more thing. I said, what's that? He goes, I'm not the victim. This wasn't done to me. This was something I took up, understood as something else, and played as a victim over and over again. We see this everywhere we look. We see this on the six o'clock news. We see people playing the victim blaming everybody else for their problems or their situation or their circumstance, wanting to put that blame on others for their own inconsistencies and lack of having a trust in something higher than them, thinking they're at all, they're, at all, they're everything that needs in the world instead of 
saying they need help from something above, something better, something greater. It's insecurity and it's insufficient for helping the world. It just creates a bigger snowball of problems, a bigger storm in the crisis of the world of selfish and self-centered people. As spiritualists, we learn through our, through our principles to become personally responsible, to be that light in the world, to be something better. There's always dangers in the world. There's always something that we could be dangerous. But if we can stay on our side of the fence and take care of us, we can see that in advance. We can tell what it is. You know, yesterday something else happened with Connor. His mother, my, my daughter Katie, uh, heard him talking out the window of the sunroom of the, of the house, the lower window. And he's just talking away, saying hello to somebody. And we're like, who is he talking to? And we go out there, and he's looking through the glass and on his nose to the glass, talking to it. And on the other side is the nose of a black bear. Well, this is Black Bear Month, by the way. One of the many things that June brings us, one of the 34 special holidays, if you will. And he watched Black Bear, Black Bear walk around the windows and then across the driveway. And he goes, I want him to come. <laughs> His mother's like freaking out. And I said, there's nature. Nature's where it's supposed to be, where we're, where we're supposed to be. Everything's fine. Everything is just the way it's supposed to be. We need to respect our furry friends, our pets, our things. But we need to respect our children. It's also international children's. Were we to make decisions based on the good for our children to come and our children here, what decisions would we make differently as leaders, as pastors, as parents? If we had only today only this hour, this moment, to make a decision based on kids, what would it be? What would we want to be the power of example of? Would it be war, fear, self-centeredness, insecurity? Or would it be to be strong, people of faith, people that have a power greater than ourselves that we believe makes things better for us. That we can put our minds to solutions, minds to healing and helping and loving. Healing comes from that inner source within us. It comes from our understanding and making that connection with that which is consistent and pure and loving. It doesn't come in calamity or craziness. It comes in finding that peace within us, flowing into that wonderment, that mystery of life continuous. Each and every one of us has an opportunity as spiritualist not to get caught up and some of the damnings and demandings of other movements and faiths. Others throughout the world that demean women, that harshly hurt women, that pick upon people because of their differences and segregate them, hurt them, put them down. No, spiritualists are not those people. Spiritualists are ones that come to understand that I have a significant life and I owe it to all others, my fellow sisters, brothers, to be responsible, to be the light within the world, to accept other people's differences. This is Pride Month. A month where people have had to reach for that pride in themselves because they were so forced 
to be in the dark or the distance or the shadows for so long. They can be themselves. They can be real in who they are. Spirituals allow this. We're not fighting it. We're not judging it. We don't come down on it. We don't have a say in it. We say, great, fantastic. We love you anyway, no matter what. We love everyone anyway, no matter what. We don't have to agree with everything you do because we don't want to see you hurt. We want the highest and best for all. And the only way we could do that is take care of the storms within us, the tragedies within us, the horrors sometimes within us, and the wars within our own being. To release some of the fears of life and grab the faith in God and the principles in a pathway to peace. Yesterday also marked, uh, in 1964, a man named Arthur Mellon invented something very special and got the pattern for it in 1964 on June 1st, which is pretty incredible. I once had a mentor of mine say, meet me down at the truck stop. And I said, why? He goes, I got some, I got a present for you. And I said, okay, this is many years ago. And so I met him down at the truck stop and he says, come on over to my truck. And I said, okay, fine, I'll come over to your truck. He says, I got something for you. And out of the back seat, he pulled out a hula hoop. That's what was invented yesterday in 1964, Arthur Mellon, the hula hoop. And he threw it on the ground. And it's one of those that lights up all over the place when you when it hits the ground, you know, and he goes, stand inside it. And I, I did. And he said, Joe, that's your world. That's what you're responsible for. If you are the best within that, you will be the light for others. But when it comes to other people's business and other people's problems, it's, just, it's outside your hula. It's none of your business. Whose business is it? And I said, God's. He goes, now you're getting it. So I'm saying to you, be careful what you climb into. Know what you're standing in. You're standing in your life. It's very, very important to take care of this life. It's very important to learn, even from the children, like Connor, that I'm only three once, Grandpa. In other words, the clock is ticking. Time goes by quickly. Don't waste a moment of your life. Live it to the highest and best. Live it well. Enjoy every moment of it, even through the tragedies and pain. Know that love is within your reach. It's in your mind and your consciousness, and that spirit is all around you. That communion of spirit and saints with us and, and angels all around us, that's what brings us to where we are. That's what holds us up in those darkest times. Take a breath, breathe easy, love each other, and have the best day you've ever had. Peace. Thank you, Reverend Joe, for your wisdom and your words of inspiration today. We now come time for our collection and announcements. There is a box on the screen, and that's the one with the little blue banner. This is for donations. We appreciate any donations at this time. If you would like to donate, you can click the box or donate through our website or send a check. We are grateful for all donations. Great and small. Please note, if you're not a member, please check our website under announcements. And in climate weather, 
to see if our in-person Sunday morning service is still being held. All members do receive an email with such announcements. Please consider becoming a member of our community. And you can do that through that little purple banner with Reverend Joe on top and become a member of our little community. We have fellowship after service every week and it offers coffee, tea, and small desserts, bagels, donuts, are just a few of the delicacies that you can have besides companionship. Online upcoming events and classes. The first and third Wednesday of the month, a community meditation with Eugenia Bushman. June 5th, new intermediate and advanced mediumship series begins. On June 20th, summer solstice celebration service with Janet Dr. Janet Pediello. June 22nd, Exploring the Kashic Records with Kevin Tadashi. Love, Intention, and Connection with Lori Sheridan. And Natural Mediumship with Sandra Atheris. June 24th, Activating a Summer Self-Healing Practice Series begins with Judith Seaman. June 26, Introduction to Mediumship with Laura Wooster. July 11th, an exploration of shamanic healing practices series begins with Judith Seaman. July 13th, Exploring Your Evidential Toolbox with Connie Fusella. July 20th, Life After Loss of Any Kind series begins with Catherine and Mitch Shirley. July 24th, Conversing with Spirit with Laura Wooster. July 27th, Understanding Medium's Mind with Pastor Joe. And in person at the Journey Within, the first and third Sundays of each month, mediumship development classes, all levels with Pastor Joe and guest tutors, guest tutors, 12 p.m. It's $20. The next class is today. June 23rd, meeting and training session for moderators of Journey Within in-person services. Please, if you are a current moderator, attend this meeting. And if you would like to become a moderator, come to this meeting. It is now time for our demonstration of mediumship. As a spiritualist church, we do believe in the continuity of life. As the medium brings forth a body of evidence of a deceased loved one, and you can take 90% of what has been said in exact way that the medium had said it, rather than in a way that you can make it fit. Please raise your digital hand, usually located at the bottom of your screen under raise hand or reaction symbols. Can some people do that for me now? And there we go. Thank you. If you can take the first two pieces of evidence but cannot continue to take the next pieces of evidence, please lower your hand so that we may find our recipient as quickly as possible. If several people can take the information, it is up to the medium to discern the right recipient. If you are invited to speak but cannot unmute or having difficulty, please type to me in the chat box. We will now listen to a song in preparation for the demonstration. Please join me in our message prayer. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I'm not there. I do not sleep. I'm a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on the snow. I am the sunlight unripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circle flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. And now I invite Reverend Joe Shield to offer demonstration of mediumship. Reverend? Thank you very much, Dennis. So before every reading I've ever done in the past three decades, uh, I've said a prayer that I wrote back when I was in the Catholic seminary and terrified of all this. So I want to say that now before I begin. And then I'm going to switch the camera and I'm going to try to draw the people that I'm seeing in my head 
uh, as best I can and give information about those who are talking to me. They can be two different people, but usually I try to ask the one that I'm speaking with to have them be the one that I'm drawing. So if you can take that information, listen to the information, that's more important. And then we'll see if we can place the drawing as well. So thank you for that. Almighty God, Holy Spirit, be down upon us, in us, and through us in every way. I thank you for bringing all these wonderful folks here together today. I ask you to surround us with the white light of your love and to pierce our hearts and souls with that love. And as you do, I ask loved ones in spirit, be with us if at all possible, especially those around about the people here today. As you step in with me, I ask you to use me in any way you wish, as long as you do it, love, light, and respect. Please show yourselves to me. Help me understand who you are and what you were like in life, what you did in life, and what happened to you. Any information you have, for those sitting here today, I would ask be quite grateful. And I ask this in the name of all that is holy, all the ancient saints, teachers, guides, loved ones, and prophets that have come before us to pave the way. And I ask this day for nothing but your highest and best, your peace, your patience and tolerance, your insight and well-being, your strength and your fortitude, your love, your light, but especially your truth. Amen. So I'm going to switch the camera now so you'll see my desktop, hopefully. And there it is. I have a gentleman with me that, that's uh, stepping in, and I feel very, very comfortable with him. He's quite a, quite a guy. I think he's a little bit rough around the edges, but I'm okay with that. I feel like he's uh, the type of person that would be no baloney, you know, he just like kind of says what's on his mind and lets it go. I believe that he was a heavy smoker when he was younger. He, you know, kind of uh, chain smoked a bit and maybe a little bit too much. He's saying that's part of the blame for his passing later on in life. I do think he should have had more years. I feel like he uh, passed uh, well before being elderly, if you will. I do think he's older, but not elderly. I also feel like he, um, as he's as he's looking at me, he's got a great smile on his face. So I think he had a, a tremendous sense of humor, and he's very very quick, and uh, like to like to pick on people sometimes just to get them just to get a rise out of them and get them to smile. He's that kind of person where he'd give the shirt off his back and really be the kind of person that would show up when people needed it. He was reverent towards you know going to a wake or a funeral and and uh, to church on Sunday, but he wasn't a great churchgoer. As much as he had faith, he just he just didn't show up every Sunday. He's the kind of person that would do it for others and to, you know, capitulate to what, what those around him wanted. Definitely a family man, definitely a father, and I want to say thank you very much to him. He does mention a Robert, so I do want to mention Robert, as I may. And as I begin to draw him, I feel like, uh, feel like he's sitting right in front of me, so I hope that someone can begin to take some pieces of this information I feel like he's got heavy eyebrows. He look a little bit, a little bit too much, if you will. But I, I want to say that there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that he seemed to have let them go a little bit, you know, as he got a little older. So I'm just going to mention that as well. And if you were to understand him, you don't, you'd know that he's got an engineering kind of money. He really would be somebody who would be able to speak well. I do think he's got a a knack for. Um, almost like, like like a knack for sale or retail. It just he knows how things work and um, he knows how to market things in his own way. Not like a professional marketer, but more somebody who just knew from from people and knew, knew how to read people. So he's got that he's got that gift, if you will. So I'm gonna mention him that way as well. If you were to understand him, you would understand that <laughs> that love that he has for you, the connection that he would have to, to you. Now, Dennis, is anybody raising their hand so far? We have no hands yet. Okay. We Thank have you. one, okay. Barbara. So may I speak to Barbara then, please? There you go, Barbara. Hi. Hi, Barbara, how are you today? I'm fine, I'm fine. What pieces of the information do you understand, Barbara? Um, I can take everything. Uh, smoking, um, died fairly, fairly young. Um, uh, his name was an R name. 
but not Robert. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, and family man, love family. and loves uh, family, loves his kids. and Yes. He keeps giving me the number five. I know that that could be May, but I, I feel like it's more like five people in the family or five children. Yes, okay. yes, five children. Yeah, that's what I think he was trying to talk about. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I'm with you because the sound of your voice sounds familiar. So thanks for opening up and taking this. Um, are you recognizing the picture at all? As it comes to be, gets worse before it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not recognizing the picture. Okay. So stay with me, okay? Okay. Thank you. And who is Jim? I want to ask who Jim is. Best friend. His best friend. Okay. So I know I'm with the right things, and you wouldn't recognize this as Jimmy, would you? Mm, oh, I didn't know Jimmy well, but maybe. Yeah. It, it, I think he's trying to let me draw somebody else close to him. So that's that's what's that's what's coming. Sometimes if if they've passed recently, you know that that's what might come. So I'm just going to kind of put that together here, okay? And you would understand you would understand with his love with his kids. He'd love to be around them and love to you know get involved and do stuff with them. Definitely. That was not not like I me when I when he was when the kids were young. It was more like. Uh, somebody who would engage and 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 enjoy every minute with him, you know? Yes. He had, yes, that, he had that kind of personality. Uh and his friend, I, his friend was his friend in the service, Jimmy? Do you remember that? I don't know that? that much about Jim. Okay. Sorry about that. I hope you hope you, that we can learn something. I'll leave a little mystery with you. How's that? Okay. Sounds I, good. I, sounds because good. I think you'll find that that this gentleman had a little bit of regimentation to himself and um, he kind of, uh, they kind of could kid each other. You know, they, they had the same kind yes. of warped sense of humor. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, you know, he's very industrious as well. I mean, he, he didn't, he didn't sit down much. So I want to say your dad was, your dad was quite powerful. You understand that, right? Yes. And I also want to say, that is, he comes to me and he holds me. He's got a love for you that's unshakable and unbreakable, almost like you were the, you, are you the one of the youngest, if, if you will, or youngest girl? Um, no, this is not my dad. Okay. No. So how do you understand this then, please? Uh, um, my brother-in-law. Ah. And was very, very, very close to him. He lived with us for a while when he was growing up. Okay. Let me go on a little further. Is that... And he is a father, right? He is a father, yes. Okay. Five children. Five kids. That's mm -hmm. just want to make sure I'm in the right place, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you for that. And what I want to also say to you is that that as I draw this gentleman, this seems to be somebody that was quite important to him, but lived longer than he did, just for a little bit longer. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's part of the mystery, but I want to say that when it comes to it. Okay. And could I also um, ask you who Catherine is or Katie? Catherine is one of his daughters. Okay, so he's has prayers for her as well. Mm -hmm, like for to sure. Mention that. Yeah. Okay. Has she been struggling or something? Yes, she has. So, so I need to say that the prayers are all out there for for them, and I want I want you to know that. I guess this guy would like to smoke as much as as much as. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. I'm going to say to you that I I think that he's coming to you to let you know that he's around for prayers anytime you need him. He's only a thought away. So just let, let him know if you need him around, because I do think that he had a tremendous amount of respect for you, that you were always honest with him and always straightforward. I appreciate that greatly. You do understand that, don't you? I do. I do, Joe. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you, and and thank you for for uh, taking this message. Know that He's there for you, and there's a number of the people around you. But I guess He wants, if you if you know anybody that that would have known this gentleman, um, then then let them know. You know His presence is there, and maybe you'll find this in pictures somewhere. But I do believe you will. Okay. Okay. Thank you. As I take that together. Okay. And can I ask you one more thing? Uh, was there a was there a Carter Street or something like that? 
Carter Street? Carter. C A R T E R, Carter. Yeah, Carter, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't come to mind. No. All right. Would you remember I said that too? I will. I think it's a residence. I, I don't think it's a business or anything. I think it's a, a the place of a residence. Okay. So I, I need to mention that. I, it could be where he lives, if you will. Okay. Because I'm getting getting info, info from here too. All right. My brother had a lot to do with cars in sales. That I can understand. Yeah. But I, I that's not what I heard though. I heard Carter. Carter, exactly. okay. okay. So I don't want to sway from that. I wanna I wanna keep that and uh I'm just going to, I'm sorry, add, add it to your mystery, but it's there. But the <laughs> car okay. sales make sense mystery. for sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Lots of love. Thank you very Thank much for taking Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate it. I have a woman with me uh, here who I believe to be, um, I believe she was quite ill at the end. I think she suffered for a number of years with different maladies, but the, it was the last uh, eight months, she's saying to me, eight months of, of real uh, questions about what was wrong, what was going on, you know, and it got worse and worse. And she certainly had other other issues, other maladies. I believe she had some sugar because I feel I feel the neuropathy in my feet and I feel it coming up my legs, the stinginess of my legs itself. I do think she had a little weight on her, but she lost a tremendous amount of that. Um, but she was a good mom and she was a good friend. She was always a very loyal friend, not one that would be convincing all over town about people, but somebody who would have who, who would have listened and given given easy sound advice, not long winded advice, but just why don't you try this type of thing? She's lovely in the way she holds herself. She sits up straight. She has posture. She has a she has a way about her. And I do believe she liked to color her hair and take care of her hair, have her hair done, if you will. I do think she got up in the years, but she definitely could have had more years. I feel like that she's. Um, possibly got to, to 80, if you will, but she suffered those those 70, those years in her 70s, not being able to get around as much up and down, using a cane, a walker at times. And I feel like she um, she did the best she could and she kept it to herself. She wasn't, she didn't want to be uh, the patient, if you will. She, she wasn't patient with being patient, she says. So I'm going to um, kind of talk about her. And I hope that people will uh, recognize her because she's lovely and she's just uh, incredible the way she comes to me. Now, I do want to mention that she, I do want to mention a Carol for sure. I also, and I also want to say to you that there is, uh, I want to say a, either like a, a, a gene, a, a genie or something like that, or Jenny, Jenny, something like that also mentioned here. So I'm going to mention her as well, and I'm going to kind of uh, take this to a different level with this pencil and just kind of begin to to put her together because I believe she's she would have been somebody who really would have given her most to people, you know, and give her, given her her all. I do think she had concerns for kids that she left behind, and she may have even lost a child in vitro. Uh, you know, like a miscarriage, uh, because I have that around her as well. Uh, and that may be a piece of information you didn't know, or maybe may not, but it's it's definitely in my in my uh, privy here is that they're seeing seeing it with her in privacy. So I need to mention that. Um, I I also want to say that she's lovely in the way she kind of pulls herself. Um, she's 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 got a gentle humor about her. She's she kind of not all that she's not trying to be something she's not and yet she um she really would give her opinion and have a have a, a voice and, and say things if she needed to i like her because the way she kind of uh gives her gives the most of who she is and i i have a little bit of weight on her face but i do think she got more gaunt as time went on um in the sickness 
I feel a lot of abdomen pain with this, and I want to kind of say there may be some womanly issues that would would have uh, been part of this whole um, difficulty, if you will. If you were to understand her, you would understand also that she she really wanted to travel more, and she she never really got to go to the place she really wanted to go. So she never got to make that final final trek or tra travel back to where she wanted to be. I do feel there's a, a bit of a, a middle European uh, kind of background here as well. So I wanna mention that. And if you were to understand her, you would understand that she, uh, she doesn't want me to put too many lines her, in her chin, but I'm sorry that I have some, but I do. Um, are there any hands up yet, please? We have two hands up, Pat and Miriam. Pat and who? Miriam. Oh, Miriam. Okay. So could I speak to Pat first, please, since she's first up? Yes. Hi, Pat. Pat? Can she voice or not? You're allowed to talk. You have to unmute, dear, if you're there, please. Yeah. No? Well, while she's working on that, let me talk to Miriam, then, please. Uh, Miriam left, but we got a Kathleen. Okay. That sounds familiar. Go ahead. Kathleen, Kathleen left, too. <laughs> yes, yes. With Pat. Can you unmute Pat? It's a little microphone down on the lower left of the screen. If you could click that. I will go on a little bit more with this um, while Pat is trying to get through, okay? Or any of the others. I do think there's some um, some teachers in the family. She's talking about the, the, the value of that. So I do want to mention that. And someone had to do with medicine or nursing or something like that. So I do need to mention that as well. Um, and and a good family all the way around. I do feel like they're, they're a strong, strong group, if you will. And we have Charmaine has just raised her hand. Is there anyone that can speak so I can hear the sound of their voice? That's yeah. important. Charmaine. Uh, yes, um, hello, uh, Reverend Joe. Hi, um, it Please. sounds very much like my father's youngest sister who recently passed, my aunt. Okay. She has two sons. One is a vet. The other was a teacher. Jenny was her sister. Okay. And do you recognize her? Uh, Eastern Euro um, European. Mm -hmm. um, it looks a lot like uh, my father's side of the family, like a combination of um, his sisters, his mother. Uh, all right. So if you'd work with me, I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe that's why things happen, right? For a reason. I so, guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for chiming in and, and for coming to that. I, I want to say I feel like um, there's a connection here. So I'm going to just continue on with you. And thank you very much for putting your hand up uh, finally to, to, to take it. I feel like there's, uh, there's a number of people over on the other side, uh, quite a few actually, uh, more than you've even mentioned, okay? Uh -huh. My family has had a tremendous amount of loss, but there was a big family, you know? And yes. Lots of people. And um, a couple of gentlemen over there, too, that were either in the service or military at one point. Would you understand that? Uh, yes, I would. Okay. And I want to say also that um, she's she's quite she's quite annoyed with me for putting all these lines in her neck. But <laughs> <laughs> so she might have had a little bit of a... Yes, yeah, she was a little vain. <laughs> a little vain. A but little. Okay. Just a little. Just a little. We won't, we, won't, we won't condemn her for that. I'll tell you that much. Right. Um, but there's so much pride in you and what you've done with your life and what you've done to help others. It's like you reach out and you're healing others as well. And um, they're all like almost applauding that. You'd understand that when I say that. Uh, yes. And I thank them. I appreciate they, that. You, I think they're behind you all the way. There's so much energy like pushing you to just be that which you want to be because you seem to like get out of your own way 
out of your own stuff to just reach out and help others. And it's an everyday thing. It's not just, okay, I'm going to do it on Sundays. You mm -hmm. want to say that? And, thank you. And I want to say thank you to you too, because there's quite a bit of honesty in you. And they're saying that's what, that's what brings it is the humility and the honesty in what you do. And so I know that that's the truth. And I don't know you, but um, at least I don't think I know you, but I'm, I'm beginning to know you just through them and saying, that how, what a fantastic way to be, to, uh, to just do what's right and do what's the best if you can, okay? Yes. Now, there's also a love of dogs with this woman. Oh, very much so. Oh my God, it's like they're everywhere. It's, oh, yes. It's like, it's, a, it's like she'll adopt another one today, you know? So, <laughs> And so there's tremendous amounts of uh, love for the fur babies, if you will. Okay. Yeah. And, they always had Collie. Oh my goodness. Always. I was just thinking that the only dog we ever had when I was little was a Collie and it didn't mm -hmm. last very long, but, but she definitely is looking at me with a great deal of uh, empathy and sympathy, if you will, for that. So I mm -hmm. just want to kind of mention that. I'm sorry. It's such a quick sketch, but I do think that there's a bit of uh, someone's mom in this too, so I got to say there's a motherly feeling here. So I was your your aunt a mom of three, uh, two boys, two boys. Uh, okay. You had said two boys at the beginning. And who was the one that lost the child? Though somebody lost the child. And um, do you know about that about about your aunt? I don't. I can't place okay. that. My my own mother lost two. Okay, because there's definitely a circle, gold circle. Around Actually, two three. Places. And that means that there there's a child that almost is it wants to be in this in the situation be known to be to be listened or remembered if you will okay mm -hmm. um, and I also want to say to you that this is a this is a woman that worked hard in her life she she was no slouch she's not just she's not only the homemaker but she's also out working and doing things. You know, uh, in her younger years, she yeah. did a lot, but as she got older, she she stayed at home. Couldn't move as much and couldn't do things as much. Right. Okay. And you understood the the either the neuropathy or diabetes or the uh, inability to walk there. But right, that's true. Is that making sense? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you to you, and I I want to kind of uh, tell you that I really want to. I wish I had time to open it up and give more because there really is a lot more with her and mm -hmm. a lot more to give, if you will. Now, she had some jewelry that she passed down to uh, some girls. Did you get a piece of that jewelry? Uh, no, um, I think her daughter-in-law did. Uh, her daughter-in-law got mostly everything. Okay. I'd watch for that, though. You never know. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, just it's just interesting how I just saw this piece of jewelry here. I don't know if you remember this piece. It's almost like a flat, um, flat close close knitted beads, if you will, um, kind of unique in its in itself. So I mm -hmm. mentioned that. Why do I want to go to Maryland? To Maryland? Why am I hearing Maryland? Um, not really. Oh. Um, her son uh, relocated. Um, I I don't know if it's to the, the Carolinas or Maryland. Okay. Um, well, just, I, just so you know, she she probably has them in mind. I'm I'm only hearing that one word, but I will say it. She's probably trying to say where you know what where her concentration is. Okay. But I'm sure she could be helpful to you. Uh huh. Only a thought away. All right. I'm going to leave that with you with that with light and love. Thank you so much for taking it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. So if you want to take a snapshot of it, I'll leave it there for a second. Um, okay, one second. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I'm so surprised she came through to me. Bye-bye. <laughs> and finally, I have a young man here, and I don't want to um I don't want to ignore him. So I know we're going a little long here, but I, I, I want to make sure that I get him because he seems to be uh, very, very, uh, he's young and, and he, I do believe he went quickly um, without really a, a lot of, uh, how can I say this? No time to, to almost even 
grieve it so fast. You know, it's just, it's just, but I'm going to just say he's, he's, he's got a gentle way about him. And um, he's with another gentleman in spirit that he met there. So I want to mention that as well. I do want to mention a John. Um, I also have a Hank or Henry, something like that as well. So I want to mention that around him as well. I feel that this young man would have been a very, very genuinely good kid with, with uh, quite a bit of uh, charism around him. You know, I, I kind of want to get his nose a little better um, because he he had such a great handsome in a way, you know, just had that handsome way about him. So I'm just going to mention that. Kept his hair very, very closely cropped and um, and he seemed to be strong in his being, you know, like, like he's in shape. So I'm just going to kind of... Uh, Mention that as well. If you were to know him, you would know that he was uh, friendly with a lot of people. He did he did have a, a friend or girlfriend in his life and and um, and uh, had left her behind as well. Um, it is accidental. It's not. Um, I don't think this is self choice. I don't think he. It's a suicide. I would not put that term on this, if you will. But I feel like he was ripped away from life pretty quickly. And if you were to understand him. You would understand that he's coming for family, coming for friends, coming for a mother that would be still here. I do believe that his grandfather is uh, with him, and um, that would be important as well. So I'm just going to kind of mention that as and ask Dennis, is there anybody taking any piece of this before I go any further? We have Pat again. Can Pat open up her mic? I asked to unmute. Pat, you there? No. Nope. Pulled away. Pulled away. Okay. Still can't get the get the, the message in. Okay. Well, part of the problem with with technology, unfortunately. That's the way it is. But I will um I will kind of finish finish this up a little bit and just let everybody know. I believe that he's around quite a bit. I do think this is an accidental death. Um if you were to take this. You would understand, John. You'd understand. You'd understand, Henry, the Hank, if you will, or Henry. You'd also understand Michael out around this as well. So I just need to mention Michael as well with this, and that seems to be very important. And I'm not talking about Angel Michael. I'm talking about, and the hair is very, very closely cropped, um, kind of whiffle, if you will, almost. Almost a bit military, if you will, the way I'm seeing it. And I do think that this this young man had a kindness in his heart. He really would be helpful to to anybody. He had, you know, he had that. Well, I don't want to I don't want to make it silly, but it's almost like a Boy Scout type of type of kid. He would have he would have learned his learned his manners and learned how to how to handle things. So quite quite important. We have a hand up with Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen, can she speak? There you go, Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. How about you? I'm good. I think this um, could be my best friend's son. The only thing I can't take, Joe, is the name Hank or Henry, but I can take the John and the Michael. Okay, well, Hank, Hank or Henry may be, may be an association with me that may be... Uh, um, I used to have, uh, when I became a builder developer and I was an apprentice, my my boss, the one who trained me, was named Tank. And he was an ex-airman uh, uh, from the military. He, he was a belly gunner for World War II. Very, very tough, but very fair and firm guy. Um, would you understand that at all? Would you understand somebody being uh, either in construction, home building, that type of thing? I can understand the tough and firm. That would be his dad. Okay. So same kind of guy, you know, like no belonging, yeah. no yeah. belonging to straightforward, tell it like it is, you know? Yes. Okay. That could be what he, the, the, the personality that you're trying to get across to me. Yes. So I'm going to mention that. You recognize the picture somewhat. I do. 
Okay. So I want to I want to say that he comes he comes to uh, to you because you're open to it, and he's got an opportunity. So he's coming to you to get the message across to somebody else. Okay. okay. And um, is there a Susan around or Sue? Not around him. Around you? Yes. Hmm. It seems to be prayers for her. I don't want to upset anybody, but there seems to be prayers around her. Yes. Um, would that be understood? Yes. She, she passed why. last week. Into it, okay. Yeah. He seems to say he's here for that as well as, you know, it's like a win-win. He'll yes. Let his family know he'll let he's gonna keep her in her prayers. Thank you. Prayers. Okay. Yes. That makes sense to you, I hope. Yes, it does. I know. Okay. So I'm gonna leave this with you with light and love because of the sake of time. But I want to thank you for all of that and um let them know that he's quite well and doing much better. Okay. Yes, thank you so much. He's he just showy. gets snapped on. Joey. Joey is Susan's brother. Okay. So just 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 know they're all they're all in concern, but they're there. Okay. That he's okay, got, thank you. All right. Thanks for taking that. Peace. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. All right. Well, Dennis, I'm going to give you back your camera here, back your I can figure it out. There we go. Thank you. All, all right. Sir, right. there we go. This concludes the demonstration of spirit communication. I thank you all for attending the service and especially thank Reverend Joe Scheel for being with us today. We end the service with prayer and song, and I invite Reverend Joe to lead us in the closing prayer. God, help us to stay in this day, stay in this moment. Help us to be kind to ourselves so as to be relieved of fears and misunderstandings and misconceptions, that we be clear-minded, clear-hearted in all that we do, that we be the best light we can be for this sometimes dark world, that we bring that light to everyone we know, to everyone we meet and to all of those we know are in need. Let our prayers go out to the world to heal all those who are marginalized, impoverished, in zones of war, hate, or avarice, confused by their own seeking of power, wealth. Help us to be mindful of our significance and our place in this world. That a simple smile can bring a joy, even if it's just for a moment, a reason to live and live well. Thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate, appreciate all your support for the journey within. Know that we love you completely. Thank you. Good night. Enjoy the closing song. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy the new week. Reverend Joe, all the best to you. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, all everybody. Right. Have a wonderful week.